The Oregon Ducks enter year two in Dan Lanning, coming off a pretty good year last year, and this year is supposed to be even better. You got a lot of returning pieces offensively and a lot of transfers coming in defensively, which we'll look at in a minute. But this is one of the many teams in the Pac-12 Conference that can go win the conference, if not go ahead and end the Pac-12's drought at making the college football playoff. So can the Oregon Ducks end up fighting their way to and through Las Vegas and into the college football playoff? Or is this Ducks team going to be yet another victim of conference cannibalism? I've said it in pretty much every video, but the Pac-12 is loaded with contenders. We'll see what happens with the Ducks this year. What's up, Tailgaters? My name is Tailgate Nate, and welcome to my channel. I'm predicting all 133 college football level or college football FBS level teams this summer. And that means I'm doing your favorite team. So hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you know when your favorite team gets uploaded. But you can support my channel in many w more ways than just that. You're doing one right now by watching the video. And you can do more by liking, commenting, subscribing, and really anything else you guys can think of to help support my channel. I don't know if I said this in any of the videos yesterday, but I do apologize for whatever technical issues were uh, going on. But I ended up getting resolved. Of course, there were videos yesterday. Today, your first video are the Oregon Ducks. How do we do preview predictions around here? I'm glad you asked. We're going to go through a conference overview, take a look at who the team lost, who's coming back, and who's coming in through the recruiting class and transfer portal, as well as taking a look at the 2023 Oregon football schedule and giving it a good old-fashioned game-by-game preview and prediction. So there are a lot of names on this screen, but ladies and gentlemen, I give you your 2023 Oregon Ducks. We're going to run through these names really, really quickly. Starting with the offense, the most important position on the field, the quarterback position, uh, you do have a Heisman hopeful in Bo Nix coming back. 3,593 yards, 29 touchdowns, and seven interceptions on almost 72% completion percentage. He's going to be another wonderful quarterback around the nation this year. Was also third on the team in rushing, had 510 yards. That's good for 5.7 yards a carry, and led the team with a by a long shot with 14 rushing touchdowns yeah no wonder you can see he's a Heisman hopeful entering this year then your backup highly recruited freshman and Ty Thompson or when he was a highly recruited freshman I should say but Ty Thompson does come back and you also return your top two leading rushers ahead of Bo Nix that's a Bucky Irving 1,058 yards five touchdowns last year and Noah Whittington had 779 yards and five touchdowns last year so your uh, running back room there should be all good and ready to go your wide receiver room is going to look a little bit different this year. As you do lose Chase Cota, who was a real good part to this wide receiver room, was actually your second leading receiver last year with 497 yards and three touchdowns. However, your leading receiver in Troy Franklin does come back with 891 yards and nine touchdowns. And then Chris Hudson, who was your third leading receiver with with 472 yards uh, last season. Uh, didn't have a touchdown, but he does come back. And you are getting some transfers coming over. Tez Johnson is a wide receiver transfer coming over from Troy. But the big transfer you're coming over is a four-star rated transfer by the name of Treshawn Holden, and he is from Alabama. So some pretty big transfers coming over there for the Oregon Ducks on the offensive end to bolster that wide receiver room. And there are other names that I didn't mention that will be headlining that wide receiver room as well. Tight end-wise, you do lose Maliki Matav Mataval, I probably butchered that last name, I apologize, but you do return your fourth leading receiver from last year uh, and your top tight end in Terrence Ferguson. 391 yards and five touchdowns for the Ducks last year will be that number one tight end again in 2023. Your offensive line, uh, you lose some very key pieces, most notably Alex Forsythe, TJ Bass, Ryan Walk, and uh, Male Sala, not even going to try to pronounce that last name. I apologize if I even butchered that first name. But all four of those guys are going to be gone off of the offensive line. And when you take a look at the uh, returners for this team, Jackson Powers Johnson, Marcus Harper, Stephen Jones will, uh, I believe, headline, headline that offensive line, as well as some big notable transfers coming over, one of which by the name of Junior Angelou, former four-star out of high school, was a player for Texas last year, was going to be really good, ended up having a season-ending injury before the season even started. He's coming over from Texas, as well as a Johnny Cornelius, uh, who's a transfer over from an FCS program in Rhode Island. Both of them four-star rated transfers, according to 24-7. Now, defensively, this is where this team loses a lot of talent, but do not forget because it's also where this team recoups a lot of talent through the transfer portal as well. So taking a look at the defensive line, this is probably, uh, or not probably, this is going to be a really good defensive line in 2023. Uh, Jordan Riley is going to be gone off of that defensive line, 20 tackles, 
half a sack last year. Not a super huge deal. You are getting a freshman coming in, your high, highest rated recruit according to 24-7. is a defensive lineman by the name of Mateo Uyunglele. Uh, and then as well as returners, you do get Brandon Dorless, Casey Rogers, and Kenyon Ware Hudson, who all come back to this team. All going to be really good parts to that defensive line in 2023. As well as getting a transfer coming over in Jordan Birch. Uh, he's going to be a really nice piece. He was a former five-star player coming out of high school, four-star rated transfer out of South Carolina. When you look in the linebacking room, okay, wow, a lot of talent leaves this linebacking room. Huh? Noah Sewell was fantastic for the Ducks throughout his career, was the third leading tackler last year. DJ Johnson is also going to be gone. He led the team in sacks last season. Keith Brown also leaves this team as well as Justin Flo. So, a lot of very nice pieces that are going to be leaving this linebacking group for the Oregon Ducks. However, you do return your second leading tackler and Jeffrey Bassa and Mase Funa also return to this linebacking group. Um, and again, some transfers coming over. Justin Jacobs is going to be coming over here uh, from Iowa, four-star rated transfer. Uh, and then coming over by way... <clears throat> My apologies, coming over by way of Arizona State is Connor Sowell, who should be a nice boost to this linebacker room as well. Now, defensive back-wise, we don't have to speak on how good of a player Christian Gonzalez has led the team in passes defended with seven and interceptions with four of them. He was very, very good, but you are also going to lose Bennett Williams, who was your leading tackler last year as well as well. Uh, Trequise Bridges and Brian Addison are some returners to this team, as well as getting a freshman in Cole Martin that is going to enter. Should put up big minutes for the secondary, but again, a lot of transfers coming over to this program. Kyrie Jackson comes over by way of Alabama. Tysheem Johnson and Evan Williams, among some other transfers coming over as well. Tysheem Johnson from Ole Miss, Evan Williams from Fresno State. A lot of talent on this roster, a lot of talent coming in through the portal. They're going to be one of the premier teams around the nation this year, as usual. Dan Lanning's your head coach, followed by offensive coordinator Will Steen and defensive coordinator Tosh Lupoy. I know it took a while to get through that roster, so I'm going to try to run through the schedule faster than usual, but here we go. Any game you see at home uh, is going to be a game that's underlined. Any game on the road is a game in italics of the slanted text. If it's in green, it means I have Oregon winning it easily. Any game in yellow is, hey, the other team's going to put up a fight, but Oregon still will win, and red is a loss. So without further ado, I give you... Your 2023 Oregon Ducks football schedule should be a nice, easy win to start off the season against Portland State. And then coming, uh, and then going to Lubbock, I should say, uh, to play the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And there's a, there, there is a, quite a narrative around that program this, this summer. And they are going to be a force to be reckoned with. And I almost picked this upset. Keyword is almost, which means I'll flash my prediction up on the screen. I do have Oregon winning this game. Former Oregon quarterback Tyler Shuck is going to be over there to play the quarterback position for Texas Tech. They got a lot of talent offensively, a lot of talent defensively. I think they have a phenomenal coaching staff that's over there in Lubbock as well. That's a real Big 12 contender. Possibly, if everything goes right, could be a college football playoff sleeper. Now, I know that is a lot to ask about that Texas Tech team, but there's a lot of talent on that team. I feel really good about Texas Tech. I'm very high on what they have. Uh, I'm very high on what they have over there. But Oregon, quite simply, I think Bo Nix is going to make too many plays against that Texas Tech defense. And I think all the transfers that Oregon brought in here uh, it, it may not pay off this early in, in the year, but I'm banking on it, right? This is, a, this is a game where I would not be surprised if an upset were to happen. I would not be surprised if Oregon were to end up dropping this game. So do not be surprised. In fact, I may even predict it when we come to week two predictions. I may even be predicting this upset. But as of right now, when I look and I sit and I evaluate these two teams, in my opinion, Oregon is the more talented team. I believe they will go into Lubbock and be able to secure that win. Should get a nice easy win over Hawaii there as well. That's a program still trying to build back up. And then I think you'll get a nice win over Colorado. However, I do want to speak on the Buffaloes for a minute because, well, we all know the story, right? Deion Sanders has basically flipped Boulder upside down. It's hanging from the rafters right now. Uh, the entire roster is new, and I think Deion is going to win very, very quickly. However, I don't think they're going to beat a program quite like Oregon this year, um, and I also um, do not think Deion will be winning this season. So uh, Oregon should get a nice win over Colorado there. And then they'll get a nice win over Stanford. I don't think Stanford has a lot of great talent to work with. I think they're going to be one of the worst teams in Power 5. Troy Taylor's going to need a lot of time to start building that Stanford program back up to where it was uh, in years prior. So 
Oregon, in my opinion, with one maybe close win against Texas Tech. I think they're going to cruise through these first five games here, uh, and they are going uh, to go into their bye week feeling really good about where they are, but then you get a little roadblock here. And if that says anything, I'll flash my prediction screen up there. Washington is up next. And you, if you've seen my Washington prediction video, you know I'm really high on this Huskies team. I think Michael Penix is one of the best quarterbacks in the entire nation. I think he's going to be a great candidate to go win the Heisman Trophy this year. They've got one of the best wide receiver rooms in the entire nation. Uh, their running back room is really good as well. And then when you take a look at their defense, really good defensive front seven. And if the secondary can improve, oh boy, watch out for this Washington team in 2023. Again, that pass defense was not great last year. I believe Washington's offense will simply be too dynamic. I think they're going to, I think Oregon going to travel on the road in Seattle and they're going to put up a really good fight. These are two very, very good teams. It's going to be a heavyweight showdown, but I think Washington defensive front seven, uh, but especially that offensive passing game, I think will win them that game as Oregon drops their first game of the year on the road in Seattle. Should get a nice win over Washington State, although I do think the Cougars have the ability to keep this one close. Um, so that is a game that I definitely would watch for as being a game that, uh, hey, maybe that's a little more competitive than some people think. Washington State's got some very good pieces, but Oregon definitely the more talented team. Then you gotta gotta then you gotta go on the road and play the Utah Utes, a team that a lot of contenders in the Pac-12 have struggled with as of late. And I think Oregon ends up dropping this game. I think the experience and play of Cam Rising is going to step up to the task. And this Utah defense, seemingly no matter what names are on it, a star always emerges. There's always some really good players to come out of that Utah Utes defense. And Kyle Whittingham has done this entire song and dance before, right? He knows what it takes to beat a team like Oregon, like USC. So I think Oregon going on the road to play Utah, not going to have too much luck there. And I think the Utes walk away with the, the victory. However, Oregon should get a nice bounce back game against Cal. However, here is what I will say against Cal. Uh, one, I think that that's going to be a very, very talented team this year. I think they've got a lot of very nice pieces under Justin Wilcox. However, I just think Cal is a team that's very, very talented that's left in a very, very deep conference. And th that's not necessarily the issue with Cal. It's just what happens when you play in a conference like the Pac-12 that's going to be really good and really competitive this year. So Cal, um, I do not see putting up too big of a fight here against the Oregon Ducks. And then the Ducks get to come back home to Eugene, Autzen Stadium, and play USC. And I think Autzen Stadium is going to be rocking. Uh, and I think Caleb Williams and company are going to be coming in here. Uh, in my prediction, they already have a loss entering this game. They very well could have a loss entering this game uh, because they play so many good teams before they get to Oregon here in week 11. Sorry, I had to look at the number there. But I think Oregon ends up walking away with a win here. In this game, uh, again, Oregon's going to be a very solid football team this year. They're going to be very competitive. I think they're going to take it to USC. Bo Nix, I think, is going to have maybe a Heisman moment here in this game. Uh, and the Oregon defense, especially late, steps up, makes some plays. They walk away with a win over the USC Trojans. Uh, former uh, coordinator for the Oregon Ducks, Kenny Dillingham, is at Arizona State. And while the Sun Devils are really going to keep this one interesting, I do think Oregon ends up walking away with a win here in week 12 against their former coordinator. Arizona State's got a lot of talented transfers coming in. I just think it's going to take some time for them to start winning right away. And then the Oregon State Beavers, I do have Oregon beating as well. That's a team that has DJ Uyunglele coming in to play quarterback for them. They've got a lot of good pieces offensively, defensively, but with this game at home, I think Oregon is going to play very, very well here. Uh, and I do believe that Oregon will find their way winning. Uh, leading them to a 10 and two record. So seven and two in conference. This team definitely has all the pieces that needs to go undefeated. Would not surprise me if Oregon were to be able to run the table. It's just a really, really tough schedule. Uh, when you play in the PAC 12 this year, it is, but I got Oregon going 10 and two, uh, losses to Washington and Utah. So let me know what you guys think about the ducks in the comment section below. And Hey, remember to play hard, but tailgate harder. I'll see all you guys in the next video. Goodbye.